Welcome to the next episode of the E Academy. Because many questions are asked about the AXD200 Wireless Universal Detector, including its configuration details and connection methods, we decided that today's episode will be entirely dedicated to this device. In addition to the AXD200 Detector, we will use the following items. An ACU220 controller with backup power supply and battery, a K1 magnetic contact, a roller shutter detector, an FPX1 flood probe, a USB RS converter. The AXD200 can work in one of the seven modes as a magnetic contact, two-channel magnetic contact, magnetic contact with the roller shutter input, shock detector and magnetic contact, reorientation detector, temperature detector, water flood detector. The detector type selection procedure was discussed in detail in episode 58, in which we showed you how to register wireless devices of the ABAX2 system to the ACU220 controller. Today I will demonstrate how to configure the AX2200 detector in each of the available operating modes. I will also show you how you can use the two inputs designated M1 and M2 the device is provided with. I will start with the AXD200 working in the first mode, that is, a magnetic contact. First I open the enclosure and insert the battery. When the LED is flashing quickly, I tap the enclosure three times to activate the detector type selection mode and check which type is currently set. The LED flashed once, which means that the AXD200 is working as a magnetic contact. I don't have to change anything, so I'm waiting for the LED to flash again to confirm the selected operating mode. When the detector is working as a magnetic contact and is visible in the system as AMD200, you can connect any NC type wire detector to the M1 input. It can be, for example, a limit sensor or an additional magnetic contact for protection of the other window casement. I will use the K1 detector for this purpose. If you do not need any additional detector, the M1 input should be shorted to ground. Now I go to the ABEX2 soft program. Connection with the ACU220 controller is already active. I click Read Data to download information from the module. In the Device tab, I click the plus button to register the detector. In the opened window, I enter its serial number. Following the prompt, I violate the device tamper switch. The detector has responded correctly as AMD200. I can now tell what number it will have on the device list. I click OK and change the detector name. Out1 is selected in the output field which means that the detector state will be signalled on the first output. The active passive operating mode will be controlled by the AR1 input. I send data to the controller. To better illustrate input violations and output activations, today I will use a demonstration module equipped with switches and LEDs. Indicators designated as LEDs 1, 2, 3 and 4 are connected to the outputs with the same numbers. Bi-stable switches designated as Bi1 and Bi2 are connected to the controller inputs AR1 and AR2. I go to the status tab. The AR1 input is not violated so the detector works in passive mode. Violation of the detector by moving the magnetic away from the enclosure will be signalled in the program and by LED1 only after the periodic transmission is received. The ON indicator has appeared in the state and out1 fields, LED1 is on. Now I bring the magnet closer to the enclosure. No violation will be reported at the next transmission. OK, LED1 and indicators went out. Now I will use the BY1 switch to violate the controller AR1 input. The color of the AR1 indicator has changed. At the next periodic transmission, the detector will enter active mode. The activity indicator has appeared. Now each violation and end of violation will be signaled immediately. This applies to both the read switch placed in the detector and the wire detector connected to the M1 input. The AR1 input restore will switch the detector back into the passive mode. Before proceeding, I will have to change the detector type, so I must delete it from the controller. In the Devices tab, I click the minus and delete buttons. I save the data. I remind you that to change the detector type, you must remove the battery for a moment and then enter the selection mode. After changing and confirming the type, register the detector again. 
For the sake of brevity, such steps as deleting the detector from the controller, changing its type and re-registering will be skipped in the further part of this episode. The detector is already visible in the program as AMD201, the two-channel magnetic contact. It occupies two positions on the list. The first position represents the read switch built into the AXD200 detector. The other one represents the wire detector connected to the M1 input. Their state will be presented respectively by the OUT1 output and LED1 as well as by the OUT2 output and LED2. The mode change between active and passive will be controlled by the AR1 input to which the BY1 switch is connected. I send data to the controller and go to the status tab. Now I violate the AR1 input. After a while, activity indicators appear at both positions. I move the magnet away from the detector enclosure, thus turning on the OUT1 and LED1 outputs. Moving the magnet away from the wire detector turns on OUT2 and LED2. Bringing the magnets closer to each other ends violation of each detector. The difference between the modes of operating as AMD200 and AMD201 is that, in the case of the two-channel detector, you get detailed information about which detector is violated. This allows you to distinguish, for example, which window or door has been opened. When registering the AMD201 detector, you can indicate that it will occupy only one position in the controller. In this situation, only the additional NC input marked M1 will be supported, which in our case is a wired magnetic contact connected to it. Now I go to the next type, that is the magnetic contact with roller shutter input, which responds as AMD202. This time the device works in much the same way as the AMD200 discussed above, but the M2 input is additionally supported to which you can connect a roller shutter detector. It is worth noting that Tampa will be reported on opening the M2 roller shutter input. This is why the AXD200 detector operating as AMD202 can be used not only for roller shutter detectors, but also for working with wired magnetic contacts equipped with a Tampa switch or Tampa loop. The S1 and S4 detectors can serve as an example. Not only violations will be reported then, but also possible tampering of the wired magnetic contact. In the Devices tab, you can see that the AMD202 detector occupies two positions in the controller. The first one represents the built-in read switch. The other one represents the wire detector connected to the M1 input and the roller shutter detector connected to the M2 input. The state of both positions will be presented respectively by the OUT1 output and LED indicator as well as the OUT2 output and LE2 indicator. As before, the AR1 activity controller input is connected to the BY1 switch. In case of the roller shutter detector, you can specify how many pulses will cause a violation. You can choose from 1 to 8. You can also define the counting time, that is, how long they will be counted from the first pulse. Four options are available, 30, 120 and 240 seconds or unlimited time. Now I will check the AMD202 works with magnetic and roller shutter detectors connected. I send data to the controller and go to the status tab. I turn on by one after a moment and detectors go into active mode. I move the magnet away from the enclosure. The OUT1 and LED1 outputs turn on. I bring the magnet closer, the indicators go out. I move the magnet away from the wired magnetic contact. Output 2 and LED 2 turns on. I put the magnet to the contact, the indicators go out. I violate the roller shutter detector by pulling the cable so that the set number of pulses is exceeded. Out 2 and L2 turns on. If the cable position is not changed, the indicators will go out after a while. The cable curls up slowly. Thanks to pulses from the roller shutter detector, a violation has been signalled. When the detector works as AMD202 and there is no need to use the NC type wire detector, the M1 input should be shorted to ground. As in the case of AMD201, when registering the AMD202 detector to the controller, you can indicate that it should occupy only one position in the system. In this situation, only the M1 and M2 inputs are supported and the built-in magnetic contact is not active. The fourth operating mode of the AXT200 is a shock detector and magnetic contact. The device connects to the system as AVD200. 
In the Devices tab, you can see that the AVD200 detector occupies two positions. The first of them represents the built-in magnetic contact. The other one represents the shock detector. It will report an alarm on registering a shock or vibration which a company attempts to force a protected door or window. You can choose the sensitivity level ranging from 1, the lowest, to 8, the highest. The status of both positions will be presented respectively by OUT1 and OUT3 outputs as well as by LED1 and LED3 indicators. The change between the active passive modes will be controlled by the AR1 input. I save the data and go to the status tab. I violate the AR1 input which will put the detectors into active mode. I move the magnet away from the enclosure, the OUT1 output and LED1 turn on. I bring the magnet closer, the indicators go out. I hit the table next to the detector, shocks have been detected, OUT3 and LED3 turn on and after a while turn off. So you can see that the detector is working properly. Optionally you can register the AVD200 detector in the controller in one position only. If this is the case, only the shock detector will be supported. The fifth mode available in the universal detector is the reorientation detector. It works in the ABAX2 system and the ARD200. Its task is to detect changes in the position of the object to which it is attached. The device remembers its position when being switched into the active state or when turning on the test mode, and then reports the detected displacement in relation to its initial position. The ARD200 occupies one position in the controller. The detector state will be signalled on the OUT3 output and the connected LED3 indicator. Violations of the AR2 input to which the BI2 switch is connected will activate the detector. For the reorientation detector, the detection sensitivity can be defined in a range from 1 to 16. The higher the number, the higher the sensitivity. I send data to the controller. In the status tab, I observe how after switching by 2 the detector enters the active state. The OUT3 output and LED connected to it have turned on, so detector reorientation has been detected. Restoring the initial position will end the violation. The sixth on the list is the temperature detector designated as ATD200. It reports alarm when it registers exceeding defined temperature thresholds. The device can occupy one or two positions on the controller. Exceeding the temperature limit will be signalled on the indicator output if the temperature falls below the value programmed for the lower threshold, L, or rises above the value programmed for the upper threshold, H. You can enter a number from the range of minus 30 to plus 70 as the temperature value. You can also specify the tolerance by entering a number from 0.5 to 10. Unlike the other operating modes available in the AXD200, in the case of the temperature detector, there is no need to switch between passive and active states. Information on the current temperature measured by the ATD200 is sent each time the detector connects to the controller. The last available detector type is the water flood detector. Its designation in the ABAX2 system is the AFD200. It requires connecting an external FPX1 probe, which must be purchased separately. The probe is available in three colors matching those of the AXD200 detector enclosure. The flood detector reports an alarm a few seconds after the probe tips come into contact with the water. The end of flooding will be signaled when the water level drops below the height at which the probe is located. The detector state will be signaled on the OUT4 output and the LED4 indicator connected to it. Instead of controlling the active passive mode with the input, I will select the Always Active option. I write data to the controller and check how the detector behaves. The activity indicator is already visible. Now I bring the probe closer to the water surface. OK, dipping the probe into the water turns on the OUT4 output and the LED4 indicator. I take the probe out of the water. After a while the signal turns off. Everything is working as intended. Finally, it is worth adding that the test mode can be used to check each operating mode of the AX2200 detector. To activate it, press the button in the ABAX2 soft program. 
In this mode, violation of the detector is signaled by means of a built-in LED. That's all for today. Thank you. Please watch the next episodes of the E-Academy. See you soon.